to the younger generation that sometimes, even though people are allowed grace, they still have to face the consequences. Where have you seen this in your life? By the end of this lesson, we will explore how sin's consequences extend beyond the individual and bring hurt to God and others, address sin and injustices that occur as a result, and admit our sins, ask God's forgiveness, and make godly choices. Scripture unabashedly chronicles King David's absolute disregard to God's law and ordinances by coveting and committing adultery and murder. The drama that follows demonstrates certain aspects of God's attributes. A righteous and just God, a merciful and gracious God, and a God who never winks at sin no matter who commits it. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, And Nathan said to David, you are the man. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7. Probably David thought that he had succeeded in concealing his sin because no one challenged him or confronted him about it. It's likely that no one had the courage to challenge him because of his position as king. It should be noted that David's sin against Uriah was not a secret. The people in the kingdom knew about it. From the servant he sent to call Bathsheba, to the servants who stayed with Uriah when he refused to go to his house, to the general who positioned Uriah at the front lines to be murdered. Finally, taking Bathsheba to be his wife was not hidden. People must have gossiped about it, but no one dared challenge him. Nathan begins with the story of a rich man who, in spite of having everything, steals a poor neighbor's only you to entertain his guest. On hearing the story, David is very angry against the rich man for committing such a heinous act. As a king, David was obligated to see that the poor received justice. Enraged by such despicable behavior, David exclaims that the death penalty is fitting for a man who would do such a wicked thing. The Mosaic law does not provide such a harsh penalty for property theft, though it does for kidnapping. David then gives the reason the rich should pay with his life because he had no pity. The rich man has pity for himself and his own possessions, but none for his neighbor. This is exactly David's offense. Not only did he take Uriah's wife, he also ordered Uriah killed and showed no compassion to spare him from David's snowballing sin. Ironically, David was pronouncing his own punishment, not realizing he was the person the story was about. The story reaches its climax when Nathan tells David, You are the man. Through Nathan, the Lord states his case against David. The Lord lays charges against David. He reminds him of the Lord's goodness to him. He gave him everything he possessed and would have given him more. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to steal and murder in order to cover sin. David is guilty on all charges. After stating his case, the Lord asks David a conscious piercing question. Why? Wherefore, why? Have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Well, first, he had forgotten the goodness of the Lord, who gave him everything he had and would have given him more. And second, David had disrespected the Lord's commandment and treated it with contempt instead of upholding it, which means disregarding the Lord. This was the same sin Saul committed. After Nathan confronted David with his sin and its consequences, David confessed and said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Unlike Saul, who tried to give excuses for his disregard of the law of the Lord, David did not try to justify his sin or blame anyone else. He readily admits his sin and confesses right away, acknowledging that it is the Lord he has sinned against. After David confesses, Nathan can tell him of God's forgiveness. Although David is totally forgiven, he still has to bear the consequences for his action. Even though David does not die for his sin, the child born to Bathsheba from David's sinful encounter does die. So here's our lesson. Although David eventually was restored to favor with God, he had to endure the consequences of his sin. Here we have an example of what it means to be humble before God, even as we retain prominence in other areas. The fact is that no one is exempt from the truth. Right is right and wrong is wrong, regardless of our station in life. Fortunately, God so loved the entire world that he gave his son, so that those who believe shall not perish in their sin, but shall have everlasting life.